Today we're going to look at instantiation or spawning things in your game. And I'm going to do this by when I shoot an asteroid. I actually don't want my asteroids to disappear or anything like that. I do want my enemies to though. But we haven't worked on the enemies yet. But when I shoot my asteroids, I do want to instantiate some sort of explosion on them. Just to show where they've been hit. So that's what we're going to work on today. Now we've worked on instantiation before. In our FPS game. So it shouldn't be too new. But let's go ahead and take a look at it this way. So the way I'm going to be doing this is we go ahead, we cast ray, we get our point. Uh, we're going to fire our laser. We're going to hit stuff. Uh, I'm probably going to call that instantiate right in here. Now the big thing is, is what do you want to instantiate? Do you want the asteroid to instantiate the explosion? Do you want the laser to instantiate the explosion? It could be tied to maybe different type of lasers or different type of explosions. In which case you want the, you know, the laser to have it. Maybe... Different types of asteroids have different types of explosions based on what they're composed of, you know, iron, ice, whatever. In that case, you want the asteroid to have the instantiation. I think I'm actually going to keep it on the asteroid itself. That way, they don't have to touch too much in the, the laser part of the code. So I'm going to come into my asteroid, and actually, it's pretty short here, isn't it? We're just going to go ahead and create a new method. Now, this one will have to be public because we are going to be calling this from the laser. It does not have to return anything, though. And this is when I get hit. I'm going to have those explosions, those particle effects go off. Now, if you want your asteroid to actually explode, maybe spawn two smaller asteroids or something like that, this is the method where you're at least going to start that chain. I don't want that to happen in my game, but once we've gone down the line of being able to blow up our ship, you should easily be able to come back here and adjust it. So I'm just going to call it I've been hit. And I do actually want to take in a vector three position. And this will tell me the exact spot I've been hit. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and get a prefab for the explosion. So I'll actually put it at the end of the serialized fields. I like my values first. And we've got a couple ways we can go ahead and grab this. We can actually just grab the particle effect. I think I'm just going to grab it as a game object. I don't think I actually have to do anything with the particles themselves. So there's no point in saving as a, a particle system. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it explosion. Now, it might be nice to actually have multiple explosions that we could cycle through, or even just pick one at random, in which case you would just make an array. I'm just going to have the one. I'm going to save that off. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new game object, which I'll just call Geo, and we're going to be equal to instantiate, and there's a few methods with this. Now, we know we want to instantiate the actual explosion itself. I want to be able to tell it the position to place this, which is going to be the position we're passed in. Then we have the option of setting the rotation, uh, the parent. I do want the parent. I'm just seeing if there's one where I don't have to put rotation. It doesn't look like it. I'll just do it anyway. And we'll just say quaternion.identity, make it face forward. Nope, not iDictionary. Identity. And for the parent, I'm actually going to go ahead and parent that explosion to my asteroid just so it rotates with it. So I can just say transform. Now I've gone ahead and actually saved this off as a separate game object. I don't know if there's any values I'm going to be playing around with it, but just in case I need to, I can come back to it. If later on I decide I don't need to have it saved off as a game object, I can just erase it. There shouldn't be any performance hit just by saving it off that way, though. Great, so let's go make an explosion script. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to be able to have... Uh, actually, we don't really need a timed explosion. We are going to need a particle system, though. So I'm going to come in, look under prefabs. It's a good spot to put it. So I'll just put it in prefab. So let's come up to the hierarchy, right-click. And I want to create a particle system right down here. Now, I'm not going to go too much into particle systems. We are going to be covering that later on. Right now, I just want one to spawn. And we'll change a few things on it. Just to maybe, Well, let's just change the color, make it red. So I'll pick start color. Maybe a little orange. And I'm going to turn looping off. And right, let's go hit head and hit simulate. So it'll go off. It'll last five seconds and then just stop. There we go. And there should be an auto destruct as well. And I don't see it. Uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll just do it in code. So I've got it set to be five seconds. So if we jump back into the code where we're going ahead and making it, we can tell it to destroy our particle system, which we're going to call GO. And we can actually tell it how much time from now to destroy it. And I'm going to make it six seconds, which is just one second longer than what it's set to last at. And to be honest, we should go ahead and make this a variable or even a constant up here. Well, I want a variable because I'd want it exposed in the inspector. And one thing we could do is when we spawn it in, go ahead and adjust that variable to make sure it lasts the same distance of time and then just make this one second longer. I'm not worried about that right now. I just want the functionality. 
So let's go ahead, we'll save this off. I'm going to call this particle system explosion. Now there's a ton of good ones on the asset store already. And ultimately in the end, that's probably where I'm going to get mine. But like I said, we will look at how to make particle systems, but I, it's a really long process. And I find it's just like painting. Like you never get it the first time. It takes, it takes time to do it. Even if you just have that naturally built in skill. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll take our asteroid. I'm just going to go ahead and spawn one in game here. I'm going to need the access to, oh, we got some errors over here. I'm going to need access to the game object. What's this? Ah, because we're casting as a game object, but we do is just say as game object. That tells the Unity that when we go ahead and create this explosion at this position with this rotation with this parent, spawn it in as a game object. Now we're there, we can store it off. We'll come back in. That should get rid of it. There we go. And now it shows up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my explosion. I sign it over, reapply it. We should be able to get rid of it now. Jump back in, let's go to the laser code. And right here where we hit, we're returning that point. Before we return the point, let's go ahead and take hit dot get component, sorry, hit dot transform dot get component. The component we want is asteroid. Now we are gonna have to save this off as something else later on, because when we're shooting our enemy ships, they're not asteroids, but we'll get into that when we cross. For now, we're just shooting asteroids. So that's what we use. We'll go ahead and get into interfaces a little later. And the method I wanted to call was, it was it I've been hit? There we go. I'm gonna pass in that hit dot point. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off. I'm actually gonna put a space after the debug, just to kind of differentiate between the debug and the actual commands. So let's jump in, see if we have no more errors, then we'll go ahead and we'll try it out. Uh, we're not using the thrusters anymore, TR. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just comment it out. At some point we might come back in and use them. I don't think so, but just to keep the console a little bit cleaner. All right, we'll go ahead, we'll start this up and let's shoot something and we should get a little bit of an explosion. Ah, I've got you my sights. There we go. And we can see that it rotates with the, the asteroid. Now, like I said, there's way cooler explosions on the asset store, but this wasn't about actually creating particle systems. It's just about instantiating. Now, there, you can pretty much instantiate anything you want in your game. Actually, we're instantiating the asteroids. I completely forgot about with the asteroid manager. We went ahead and instantiated asteroids. So we have looked at it in this project as well already, but now we've gone ahead and used it for the explosions. I think I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead, create a separate script for the explosions. Well, we're here. And I'm just going to call it explosion for now. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go ahead and move that code over that we just put into our asteroid. Uh, I'm just going to take the whole method for now. Move that over. We're not going to need a start. We're not going to need an update. This way here, for those that are want to go ahead and start putting this on other game objects in their scene, this will give an easy way to do it. Uh, asteroid, asteroid, going once, going twice. Where are you? Way over here. So that means we'll have to come up. We'll have to grab the explosion. There we go. Uh, I want to make sure there's only ever one of these on the game object. So I'll disallow multiple components. I'll have to come into laser, and now instead of going in and grabbing the asteroid script, we're going to grab the explosion script. I'm going to have to take my asteroid. I'm going to put it back in the scene. And then go ahead and put that new script on it. Now this isn't the way I want it in the final project, but it, it'll work. Because we can easily attach this script to anything in the game that we want to blow up. And it will call it. And just, just to be on the safe side in case there's something that doesn't have that on it, let's actually go ahead and do one more check. So I'll do it after debug. I'm gonna say if, well, we'll go out and get it first. So explosion, I'm just gonna call it temp is equal to, and we'll go ahead and get that out. So we're actually gonna go look for it. Then we're gonna check to see if temp is empty or if temp is equal to null. If it's not equal to null, meaning that we did find something, then we can go ahead and say temp dot I've been hit 
and then pass that in. And if it is null, then we won't have to worry about calling it and getting an error. So let me explain this a little bit clearer. We're gonna go ahead and when we hit something, we're gonna to check to see if it has an explosion component on it. Do we have that script attached? If we do, we're gonna save it in temp. Uh, if it does not have an explosion script attached to it, then temp is gonna be equal to null. So what we do is we say, well, is temp equal to null? Sorry, it should be not equal to null. So if temp does not equal null, meaning that we actually did have an explosion script attached to it, then we're gonna go ahead and call I being hit and pass in that position. If it does not have the explosion script attached to it, we're not gonna to try to pass in any data to it because, well, the component does not exist. Either way, we're still gonna return this back to our laser so we can draw the lasers to the point that we wanna hit. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer. So I'm gonna save that off. We are gonna to have to load up the asteroid. We've got the script attached. We are gonna to have to put the prefab back on it. There we go. Now let's try it one more time. This should still work. We should have no problem with it. Let's shoot that one that spawned beside me. There we go. It still works. And it's gonna look pretty cool, I think, once we actually get some really good fire particle systems on it. Now, of course, you'll wanna have sound and everything else. And by having it as a separate script, it's really easy to add those explosion sounds to it. And just like we did with the particle systems, or what we were gonna do with the particle systems to have different types of explosions, we can actually have different types of sounds as well. And we can just pick one out random. But anyway, that's it for this one, or I'm just going to go on for hours, and no one likes an hour-long video. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.